Hey, everyone. It's so good to see so many familiar names and new names and see it spread across, across the state from the mountains to the east. And that's what we want to see. And we are recording this um, because we know not everybody can do a noon webinar and Zoom meeting on a uh, Thursday afternoon. So we'll record this and keep um, key sections of this. We'll break it up into little videos and pop it up um, on our YouTube channel so that folks will have access to this because we really want to have this be the ground level setting of what we have to do over the next 80 days. <laughs> we only have eight weekends left of voter registration and we are, you know, built for this moment. So we hope that you're all ready, ready to dig deep, ready to do what the mission uh, that is calling for at this moment in time uh, to secure our democracy by helping all eligible voters get registered at their correct address, uh, know when, where, and how to go vote and make their vote count. Um, and like we said, we couldn't do it without your support. We've been doing this for 10 years across North Carolina and been growing every single year. Um, despite this being our third presidential election, this is a election that we've never seen before. Um, remember last one, it was a pandemic. So we've got a lot going on and we're excited to be in the field, full force, um, ready to help you help your neighbors vote in 2024. So if you don't already follow us on social media, we're at You Can Vote NC. We will be sharing so much election information directed towards voters and to volunteers um, over the next several weeks that we hope that you will share. Um, and of course, you can always email us. This is our main email address is vote at youcanvote.org. And um, let's get started. I am going to... Let's see if I can get my thing. <laughs> Here's our agenda for today. So welcome. We're so glad you're here. Um, it is a beautiful Thursday in North Carolina. And I am Kate Feldman. I am the founder and executive director of You Can Vote. And like I said, we were founded in 2014. And over the past 10 years, we've educated over a million North Carolina voters face-to-face, face-to-face -face, face -face conversations um, with our ever-popular uh, materials, the fridge card. We'll go over that later. And um, we've also, you know, done thousands and thousands and thousands of voter education and registration events across the state. So everything we've learned up until this point and even this year has been put into all of our programming that we're doing this year. Because we, by talking to voters in various communities and hearing their concerns and hearing where they they might um, need information and the most common questions, the most common hiccups for somebody not having their vote count, like we know those barriers, we are where the rubber meets the road, so we will give you tips, tricks, and tools of how to best serve um, voters in your community. Um, we've helped over 100,000 voters get registered and get red voter registration is um, the, it is the time, and I will show you what time it is <laughs> coming up. So, um, and then you're gonna hear from Jen Thomas, um, our data director and field director here at You Can Vote, um, who's gonna walk you through all, the whole science and the method behind our, our get out the vote programming and what is most effective right now and most needed right now. Um, then I'll come back on and share with you the fabulous tools we have. Nobody needs to reinvent the wheel this year. We have um, nonpartisan tools that you can plug and play, whether it's your community group, your sorority group, your neighborhood listserv, uh, you name it. We have got week by week sample emails, sample social media messages, uh, graphics, uh, printable flyers, you name it. We have what you need if we can't physically be at a location um, to, to serve uh, directly, we can help you out and make sure you're doing it right. Um, and then we'll talk about next steps and we'll have plenty of time for Q&A at the end. So if you can kind of hold your questions until the end, um, when the chat starts popping off, that's when um, our speakers, including myself and Jen, um, start to, uh, we get distracted from what we're trying to say. And then it also takes folks' attention away from the content that we're trying to share. So just know we will have lots of time for you to pop those questions in the chat 
at the end at the Q&A section. So if you could just jot down your questions while we're going, that would be very, very helpful for us. All right, well, let's get going. Um, if you're new to You Can Vote, I want to share with you our vision. Um, and by getting out the vote this year, we will have more space in order to enact our vision. So we envision a representative democracy that reflects the diversity of our state, the great diversity of North Carolina, and includes all voices and aims to serve all North Carolinians. This is our vision. And through our mission of voter education, registration, and mobilization, um, we hope to make this vision a reality in the future. And so I said earlier in my warm up welcome, we got to know what time it is. And the time is now. <laughs> and, if, and my cat might come in here to this webinar. So um, I always like to use little cat memes. So what time is it in the state of North Carolina and the state of um, what we need to do um, ahead of November 5th? So today, August 15th <laughs> through October 11th, the number one mission for You Can Vote is voter registration. Voter registration, voter registration. We have to make sure folks have an accurate, up-to-date voter registration so that when they show up to vote early or when they show up to vote on election day, if they don't think about it until November 5th, that they're ready to go, that they've got a polling site around the corner from their house, that they can go vote on November 5th and have that vote count. Um, a lot of people haven't voted since 2020. There's a lot of new voters that have never, ever voted. And the paper voter registration form is the gold standard on getting someone registered to vote. Um, a lot of folks wish there was like a technology, a tool, but only folks who are DMV customers uh, in North Carolina and have DMV ID can get registered to vote online. And that's also clunky. So we're checking every person's registration and getting folks registered where they're gonna be in October and on November 5th so that they can vote. Yes, there's same day registration. However, of accurate voter registration in the county where you are will save time at early voting. Um, early voting, voter registration at early voting, you still have to have new documents proving your address. And that combined with this new photo ID rule, we want to streamline the process for folks. So as many people we can get to check and verify their voter registration between now and October 11th, that deadline, we will be saving votes and building the voter list um, of, of registered voters. So this is our key priority and key message through October 11th. And then October 17th through November 2nd, early voting is happening in North Carolina. That's where anyone who missed that voter registration deadline, we can get them registered at early voting at any early voting site in their county. So this is a big opportunity, um, but we cannot rely on that same day registration as our, our main focus. And all we need to do is push early voting. We have to push registration until the deadline. We will be doing phone banks. We are calling all the voters who registered and telling them, hey, it's time to early vote. We registered you earlier in the year or last year. And now guess what? It's time. Let's make sure you're still where you're located. Get to an early voting site and update your registration. If you're not where you registered before, um, we can fix that. And here's what to bring. Because um, we know we have a new photo ID law. And folks are confused, and especially young people are confused. You know, if they lost their ID or they don't have a North Carolina driver's license, we have to help folks know that there are a lot of different kinds of ID that they can use. And if you don't have one and you lost it, go vote. There's a reasonable, um, there's an exception for a photo ID exception form. So we don't want that to be a barrier, either a mental barrier or, um, or have folks be confused and just stay home because they don't understand the rules. And for most new voters and young voters, they really need to learn. Um, you know, it's not like a trip to the DMV. You don't need to bring your birth certificate. <laughs> um, but there are certain things that you should bring. But if all else fails, just go and vote. 
And we'll be doing the same education out in the community where people are working, shopping, um, high traffic canvassing um, to, to point people and have them look up their early voting locations and have them make that plan and tell us when they're going to go, where they're going to go, remind them what they're going to bring, have them really walk through their plan to go and vote early um, during, the, during the early voting period. It's such a huge opportunity to get out the vote because we know that 99% of the people who vote early, that vote will count. That vote will count. This is your insurance policy. If you vote early, it's it's gonna count. It's gonna count as long as you bring an idea if you have one. Um, we'll also be doing voter protection um, and vote tripling relational, um, relational organizing at polling sites, especially polling sites that are serving young voters because we know um, a lot of young voters have questions and they're new to voting and we wanna make sure if they get turned away um, at the polling site that we um, assess their situation, have them call the voter hotline if they needed to, um, so we can correct any misinformation by poll workers. And then have, importantly, coming out with an excited I voted sticker, we're gonna have folks text three friends, come vote early. And we'll have them scan a QR code, send a text to their group chat, and um, we did 24,000 of these contacts in 2022, um, and it really worked well. Um, and we got a lot of folks to turn out because their trusted messenger, their friend, their um, coworker, their daughter texted them and reminded them like, hey, it's time to go vote. I just voted, you need to vote too. So this is all our strategy for the early voting period. And we, Jen just put phone banks online, so we'll have uh, things for you to sign up for at the end of this call. Um, and then, of course, November 5th, Election Day, you can only vote where you're registered on Election Day. And if you want to vote by mail, that ballot has to be in you know, the hands of your County Board of Elections by the end of the day on November 5th, as that polls close. It has to be there. There's no grace period. So anyone you know that wants to vote by mail or needs to vote by mail, get that request in and get that ballot back right away. Um, the, that's the, the most problems come and the most ballots are challenged or not counted with vote by mail because there's just so many little places where a signature is in the wrong place or there's no address of the witness. There's just a lot of things that go, go wrong. And the Postal Service has been running really behind. Um, both my, my children voted provisionally from college um, in the municipal election and the primary. And in the municipal election, uh, the California ballot didn't come back in time. And in the primary election, the Boone ballot didn't get back in time and get counted. So um, even my kids had problems voting by mail. And believe me, they had plenty of uh, warnings and <laughs> reminders. So um, really, it's, it's if you need to vote by mail, just follow the directions and get it in on time. Okay, so next up, we are here for the, the conversation that y'all wanted to have was get out the vote. Um, and get out the vote is with the GOAT, Jen Thomas, who has been with You Can Vote for five years now. This is her fifth cycle with You Can Vote. We are so lucky to have Jen. Um, Jen's from Greensboro originally. She went to UNC Chapel Hill. Um, then she went she, and got her PhD in the classics and, and was an ac academic professor for a while. Um, and then she skipped back over to the, the fun side, the election side, um, and worked for several um, statewide campaigns um, for years and years, and then came back to North Carolina and wanted to help with voter registration. And here we go. We are five years later, rocking and rolling with Jen. Jen Thomas is our data director. So um, I'm going to let her share all sorts of uh, all sorts of knowledge bombs with you right now. <laughs> Go ahead, Jen. All right. Hey, everybody. So yeah, I'm Jen Thomas. I'm the data director at You Can Vote um, and also our field director. Um, and this is my 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 uh, 20, 20 years of campaigns. My first campaign was 2004. And, um, you know, we're not doing exactly the same things we were doing in 2004, but some of the things are, st there are some tactics that are evergreen and some that we have to update. Um, newer is not always better, but you gotta, you can't just do what you always did. So we're gonna talk about um, turnout and tactics. If we go to the next slide. Um, so yeah, keep going. There we go. Uh, so it's a roller coaster, right? When you look at this graphic, this shows you turnout in, in um, different types of elections 
uh, since 2008 in North Carolina and it goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up and then it goes down. So one, I keep hearing people saying, well, turnout in the primary was only 24%. And that's, that, that means turnout will be low. It doesn't. Turnout in the primaries has nothing to do with turnout in the generals. And you can kind of see that here. Um, what it, it does mean is that maybe there were, there were people who maybe in a more competitive primary year would have voted in that primary and gotten those voting skills, right? They would have updated their address. They would have known about photo ID. They would have gone in and, and seen all these things on their ballot when maybe they were just thinking it was going to be president. So we are looking at a lot of people who um, maybe missed the last election and maybe miss the last midterm because the 2022 midterm turnout was a little down. And so we've got a big group of people who either haven't voted since 2020 or haven't voted at all, but either because they are, they've are they turned 18 since 2020 or um, they haven't voted in North Carolina They haven't because they moved to the state since 2020. And that's hard too, right? States vote different ways. And I've talked to so many people from the West Coast who are like, but we only do voting by mail. Can you even do that here? Because that's the best way. And I'm like, well, you can, but we have early voting. And here's a great option for you now that you're in North Carolina. You don't just have to vote the Oregon way, right? So we are trying to um, get out the message, but it is a roller coaster. So, and roller coasters are scary. If we go to the next one, I wanted some gifts too, right? They're scary. But the thing about a roller coaster is you don't do the highest hill the fastest first, right? Getting up that one, it's hard. You go tick, 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 tick. And then you go fast, but the next hill's easier and the next hill's easier because you are building momentum and it is the same with voting. So let's go to the next one. Voting is a habit. Are we stuck on the roller coaster? Okay, there we are. Uh, it's very much like Carowinds. I'm in Charlotte, so it's appropriate. Um, voting is a habit. And so I was crunching the numbers to look at what does what does the little bit of tur lower turnout we've had the past few years mean for 2024? Well, if we look at what happened in 2020, we had amazing high turnout in 2020, but that's also because we had very good turnout in 2018. So there were a lot of people who had sort of learned how to vote in 2018. Um, and as you can see from this chart, what it shows you is the baseline turnout in orange, and then the turnout for voters who had voted in other elections. And you can see we had 75% turnout, which is really good, but it was those voters in eight who voted in 2018, they came out 15 points higher for their 2020 turnout. And that makes sense, right? If you vote in a midterm, you're definitely gonna vote in a presidential. It's not just about interest, it's about skills and capacity and knowing what to go and where to, uh, where to, when to go there. And for youth voters, it's even more important. Uh, 2018 youth turnout was 29%. And that may, that may sound terrible, but it's not. It's really good for 18 to 25 year olds in a midterm election. Um, it was over 10 points higher than 2014. And as you can see, that paid dividends in 2020 when overall youth turnout was 60%. But those voters who had voted in 2018, their turnout was almost 19 points higher um overall and if they voted in 2019 it was even higher and then the ones who voted in 18 and 19 they came out nine what is that 60 plus 32 92 percent of them turned out so that's why we were working so hard last year to get folks in the municipals it's why we were working so hard to get folks to vote in the primary so they could build those skill sets now that work is done what we have to wonder is because turnout was low there's a lot of people, particularly young people, who don't have the skills they need to vote. And that's what we're really focused on with our GOTV programs and what we would encourage you to focus on, either as a volunteer coming out and, and deciding where to use your time or as a partner organization, deciding how your, your resources should be spent. People want to vote. There's an idea that people are apathetic and they don't care and you have to convince them that it's important. That is not true. They, they may not be on like political Facebook pages all the time, it's probably good. There's a lot of bad info out there. They may not be watching cable news all the time. Again, not, 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 not bad if they're not doing that. They are going to want to get there. It's just that they may not think about it until November 4th because all they know is that November 5th is election day. And so they're gonna wanna vote on November 5th. They might not be registered. 
they might not be registered at the right place. They might not know to bring their ID. They might go to the wrong precinct just because they pass one and they think that's where you vote. And our job is to help them know what, where to go, when to go there, what to bring, and hopefully before October 11th, get them registered so that they have a better chance of success. So now let's talk about what are the uh, sort of different types of GOTB tactics. So if we can go to the next one, um, canvassing, this is door to door. This is the most effective um, method of raising turnout. It's been established over and over again. You usually get, and this is, you know, this is kind of a, a study of studies of looking at experiments for 20 years from Gerber and Green. Um, one new voter for every 16 contacts, there are, um, it has effects in the household. So like, it's not just the person you talk to, but you don't just have to go door to door for that. Um, any face-to-face -face conversation is effective. It's the person to person element that changes people, not the fact that you're on their porch. Conversations are not necessarily more effective because they happen on someone's porch. So what we do at You Can Vote, we don't go door to door, but we are out at high traffic events talking to everybody. I'm gonna be at Charlotte Pride this Saturday. Um, we're gonna get a lot of people registered, but we're gonna to talk to at least 10 times as many more voters as we register. And every one of those voters is gonna get one of our fridge cards and we're gonna have a little bit of a GOTV conversation. It's a little too far out for that to be like the most effective conversation ever. That's another thing I'll talk about, but it's still gonna help. And they're gonna, uh, even if they're registered at the right place already, they're gonna know a little more once we have our 90 seconds with them than, than they would have. So we would encourage you, find ways to have face-to-face -face conversations. If you are in North Carolina and you wanna do this work, this is the best advantage you have. And for our folks who are out of state on the call, uh, we have some options for you as well. But having that face-to-face, person-to-person interaction, that is still the best thing you could be doing. Uh, second best is phone calls. So um, we, you get one new voter per 36 contacts when volunteers make calls. And the, the difference here is not just robocalls, but paid call centers, right? We've all gotten political calls where the person comes on and you're like, hello, and they're like, the upcoming election is the most important election in our lifetimes. If you do not vote, we will all die immediately. And it's the tone and the message don't quite connect, right? Um, volunteers, you have so much enthusiasm, you're going to share that. So that's why we're doing phone banks. I hear people say, oh, young people don't answer the phone. And it's true. A lot of them don't. But enough of them do. And our list is like over 50% 18 to 25 year olds. And they answer, they'll hang up on you. But if you can get that little hook in and have a conversation with them, you are going to change their entire experience. Because I will tell you, they say crazy things They're like, can I do it online? No. You can't vote online and we're going to change that and we're going to get them out. So um, especially for our out-of-state friends on the call, um, if you would like to do our phone banks, you can do those from wherever you are. Um, if you're on the West Coast, it's a convenient afternoon time. The rest of us are, you know, giving up our evenings for it. But um, we would love to see you on the phone banks. Um, there's going to be training. We're going to really emphasize um, quality of the conversation. Um, and we're going to be um, making a real difference because these are all people who registered with You Can Vote. They kind of remember the, 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 I'm not wearing my orange, but they remember the orange shirts. They remember those people and they're going to want this information. So direct mail, that's the next one. Direct mail is good. One new voter for 282 recipients. Unconventional messages are more effective. And by that, I mean the ones that say we're going to tell your neighbors if you don't vote. Um, I know I know a lot of folks are writing postcards. We don't do that at You Can Vote because we prefer to really focus on our, our face to face on the ground capacity. Um, if you are like doing postcard programs, make sure they're getting mailed on time. Like Kate was saying, mail is slow. That's not just for ballots. That's for your postcards as well. I got a postcard encouraging me to vote two months after the 2022 election, right? So think about that. Uh, SMS text. Those are pretty good. You get one new voter for 312 voters targeted. That doesn't sound like a lot, and it's not, but you can send a lot of texts. Texts are scalable, right? If you're still interested in text banking, that is still an option, but for the most that's part now, that's automated. Um, and then uh, voter registration, 
Why are we so focused on voter registration? Because at least one in three new registrants votes in a presidential year. Voter registration is the single most effective thing you can be doing before that October 11th deadline. And partly that's because it gets people on the rolls at the right place so that they have a greater chance of success when they decide to vote on election day. Partly it's because it gets people on the rolls and then they're on these GOTV lists so that we can call them. And we're calling them about the right information. We're not calling them and they've moved and we need to get them somewhere else. So we're really focused on voter registration, not just because like it's good to get people registered, but because that is what's gonna be effective um, for turnout. So that's kind of our strategy. We are really all in on our North Carolina presence. Um, we really wanna do things that are face-to-face, -face, having that um, person to person impact. Um, but we are also, you know, we're, we're making calls. Those are person to person calls. When you're a volunteer, you're in, your infectious attitude is going to come through the phone and it's really going to make a difference. Um, and you're going to help all, almost all of these are really young people make their plan, figure out where to go, tell them what to bring and, and, and just improve their chances of getting there. We don't have to tell people like, hey, don't forget to vote, or hey, voting is really important. They know that. It's the logistics that they need help with. So I'm gonna end sort of three three general tips um, for when you're thinking about your time or, or for our partners when you're thinking about your programming. One, a good program for any of these tactics is more effective than a bad program in a more effective tactic. So canvassing is really good, but that doesn't mean like, you just hand people a clipboard and you go knock doors. If there's no training, don't do it. That's why we have so much training in our programs and we are gonna keep dragging you. There's gonna be trainings for the phone banks, trainings for our GOTV stuff. That is because we need to run a good program to have a positive effect. And if, if you are signing up for things and there is no training, that may be a red flag that your time is not being well spent. Um, uh, two, you notice that social media is not on this list. Not maybe the most, it's not, that's not really, uh, it's not, not super impactful. There are things you can do. And definitely if uh, for our partners, leverage the trust you have with your people. It is not just about broadcasting to a, a billion people. It is about that relationship that you have. And so you really want to use your lists and your relationships um, and not just you're not just trying to tell as many people as possible, hey, November 5th is election day. They know. Trying to talk to your people, give them the information they need. Um, and finally, a good GOTV conversation is a little awkward. It's an intervention. You are trying to change behavior. You are trying to get people to do something they maybe weren't going to do and maybe weren't going to do right now, right? We, we want to get people to go earlier and vote early because they have a better chance of success doing that. They may not have known that was an option. They may not want to think about it for another week or so. So we're trying to change behavior. That requires a slightly more awkward conversation than, hey, are you going to vote? And people are like, yeah, that's, that's not what we're trying to do. We really need to have a little bit of an awkward conversation. So lean into that, lean into the fact that it's a little weird, um, but it's positive and we're going to once you get over that hurdle that you're asking people to do something they don't really want to think about right now, um, they're going to be appreciative because they are going to need this information. You're going to have a good conversation. You're going to connect with them and they're going to take that information and go and have a successful experience at the polls, which helps all of us, not just the individual voters, but the fewer people who end up at that help desk on election day, the faster it goes, the polls close on time. Everybody feels good about the results democracy wins. So thank you all. Those are my tips. And um, hopefully we'll see you on the phone banks. Hmm. Thank you so much, Jen. Everybody give it up for Jen in the chat. Um, okay. Now it's time for me to share with you the voter education tools that we have for you and have been working on and are tested and tried and true ways to help voters and communicate really complex information in um, basically the order of operations in which it needs to be explained. Um, so our tools, our gold standard tool is the fridge card. If you've ever done a You Can Vote shift with us, 
you've worked with this, you've learned it. It's your, it, it, it's all you need to say to a voter. If this is all you can say and all, the only conversation you have, like this is okay. They need to know this information. Um, it has the early voting period, the election day, um, who can vote? You know, a lot of people will tell us like, oh, I can't vote. And then you walk up through the eligibility and they, they say, well, I don't have a driver's license, so I can't vote. It's like, well, hmm, that's not true. You can vote with any of these IDs. And if you don't have one, you can ask for the photo ID exception form. So really critical information on the fridge cards. This is what we walked through on a You Can Vote training. Um, it has the lookup for every every single person to look up your voter registration and confirm where you registered this year um, before October 11th. Uh, we only um, provide these at, you can vote shifts, you can vote uh, official events, have these cards for y'all um, in English and in Spanish. So come get trained, come out with us, learn how to work with these. Um, but we have other tools for folks who are not working on you can vote shifts. We have all of our know your rights guides. Any single voter that you encounter, again, these are in the order of operations, um, especially the student one. I really like the student one thinking about residency and where you live and, and how you get registered. Um, locked up, know your rights in North Carolina. Um, we are going into the jails for folks and, and asking if it, they're eligible um, to vote, if they're only serving a misdemeanor or if they're only charged but not yet convicted with a felony. Um, they are eligible to vote. So these Know Your Rights guides are two pagers, a little bit bigger and longer than the fridge card with some specific information uh, for specific considerations. So you can download these on our handouts page and um, use and share them widely. Another uh, exciting new tool we have is printable flyers to post in your office, your classroom, your neighborhood. Um, keep with you, have people scan this QR code because like I said, we're checking everyone's registration. Um, so these are really simple, easy with, you know, we've got the dates, um, we've got the eligibility, we've got, you know, have you moved since you last voted? Here's what you need to do. Here's how you get registered. Um, so feel free to download these, print them, post them, um, and, and, and use them. Uh, toolkits. We have toolkits for your, your, you and our partners. Um, we have several organizations um, that will share our week by week uh, messaging guidance on the important dates and deadlines and rules and considerations and what's on the ballot. Um, and so please download this. Uh, please feel free to use it. Don't, you know, I know a lot of organizations were, you know, trying to think about the graphics and the and all the messages that they were going to write in their email or um, email campaigns to their constituents. And like, we have it here. It's right. It's specific for North Carolina. Um, it's been vetted by the Board of Elections. So um, please use our voter education um, toolkit um, uh, freely and, and feel free to share it. We also have a high school toolkit for educators. Um, that's available on our toolkit site and the campus playbook. So if you're um, working on college campuses, we have several best practices um, that we have developed and we are uh, sponsoring the North Carolina Campus Voting Challenge again with our partners at All In Democracy Challenge and NC Campus Engagement. So we're working um, with uh, dozens and dozens of, of colleges and community colleges and HBCUs across the state um, to help them uh, make and um, execute a great turnout uh, registration and turnout plans for their campuses. So please uh, use and share these resources. And the QR codes, we love a good QR code. Uh, so we've got an English voter guide and yesterday we just launched our Spanish voter guide. So it's our entire voter guide page is now in Spanish. Um, so we can confirm your registration on this on this page. You can find your ID requirements. You can learn about the 20 offices on your ballot. Um, so please uh, direct people to this guide. Super easy. And again, in the order that people need it um, to verify their registration and find where they need to go. And we're really excited. This also launched yesterday. 
we have a candidate guide. Uh, we have not produced a candidate guide in the past. Um, it's really hard to, you know, do nonpartisan candidate guides that can be accepted um, by all of our partners and um, and that goes all the way down the ballot. I know in the past we've shared um, the League of Women Voters vote 411, um, but a lot of times there would be missing offices or a candidate wouldn't reply. So it would be it would have a lot of, uh, of gaps in it. Um, and so we have partnered with um, Branch to um, have a, ba a ballot builder on our website. So you can see who's running, you can do little hearts and likes um, and, and uh, play around with what's on the ballot and what these offices even do and what the candidates say in their own words and their own um, websites about how they, they stand on the issues that you care about. So it's really exciting. If you haven't had a time to play around and build your ballot and see your candidates, please do so so that you can help walk others through it and share this tool. Uh, the number one question we get from young people um, is, I don't know who to vote for. I don't know who all these people are. And when I was training some folks uh, on campus the other day and asked um, all the grad students about what, what, their first, what they were surprised about by their first voting experience, each and every one of them said the offices after the main office. <laughs> they, they, they knew who was at the top of the ticket and what they were going to do, but then there are all these surprises, these judges, these school board members, they didn't know what to do. And if you don't know what to do, a lot of times you'll just leave it blank. Um, and, you know, we want to make folks confident, like Jen said, they need to know where to go, what to do, what the experience is going to be like. This is one more piece of the experience is knowing that you're going to get this ballot and you're not going to be intimidated because you've already seen who's running and picked your candidates before you go and I'll be on your phone um, or you can print it out. And finally, we're almost at Q&A. We're moving right along. Here is our action list for North Carolina at this time, at this moment. So we're asking everyone, if you're going to talk to a voter um, with, you can vote, or just on your own to help your own community, get trained, attend a You Can Vote training, um, and spread the word. Things have changed since the last time people have voted. And like Jen said, people have so many questions um, about voting in North Carolina. There's new voters, there's new to North Carolina voters. Um, chances are you're going to need to explain voting to a few people. At least we hope you will. You're on this call. Um, so come get trained and learn how to how to do it and learn how to help people with voter registration. Really critical. And then get involved. We've got events on our website. We've got our phone banks on our website for October during early voting. Sign up. We want to fill out those phone banks so that every single one of the um, oh, we've over registered over 15,000 voters this year. Um, we need to call them all. <laughs> and so we need to fill up those phone banks and get hours on that um, phone bank dialer um, making those calls. And so please sign up for our events in the, in the community through for registration and then um, look at your October schedule for early voting and, and get signed up for phone banks. We also are in our final fundraising push here for the next month until uh, the end of September. We need to fund our field organizers, our civic fellows on college campuses. We have 24 fellows across North Carolina campuses that are going back to school that are gonna be working part-time as paid civic fellows for us to register and educate and mobilize their, their uh, campuses. So we need your financial support. Um, please go to youcanvote.org slash donate and give what you can today so that we can finish strong and, and bring on more students to help us with this work. Invite us. We accept speaking engagements. So request us to come speak to your event um, or come, you know, if there's a great registration opportunity that you think um, that you have for us, if we can talk to a lot of people. Um, or if you want a specialized training, um, please request a voter educator right on our website. And then sharing good voting information. Um, this is just so critical this year with so much confusion. Share information, fact-based information from either the North Carolina Board of Elections, State Board of Elections, or our website that has been vetted 
um, because it's just really hard to keep up with North Carolina election laws. <laughs> and so um, we're asking folks to share state-based, fact-based resources when it comes to voting to build that trust. So many people are going to be looking themselves up and we want to teach them how to look themselves up. Selves up. So we do, it directs right to the state board website, that voter lookup tool. So um, spread hope use positive language, do no harm. These are our final, final tips for getting out in the field and, and helping voters this year. And I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing you at a You Can Vote event soon and wearing orange. Hopefully it's our, it's our favorite color. Everyone looks great in orange. All right, let me do a quick scan here of the chat. I think, I think we answered these questions. Um, yeah, I think we're good. I saw a couple of folks talking about their experiences and um, appreciate that. And I appreciate y'all who have stuck with us for so many years and especially the folks who are brand new, just finding us for the first time. Um, really appreciate your enthusiasm and your support and um, hope that you have, are feeling fired up and feeling uh, confident yourself in your volunteer activities and we will uh, stick on till one o'clock if there's any other questions. But thank you so much for being here and really appreciate you guys coming, coming to us on August 15th, earlier than ever. Yes. Um, happy 2024. <laughs> thank you all.